Hello students, myself Dr. Ronjita Sinha, Assistant Professor in the Department of Basic Science and Humanities, Physics Section, Asansol Engineering College, going to present the topic named Constraints. This is under Module 1. Subject name is Physics 1. Subject code is BSPH101, Oblique 201. This is according to the MacOut syllabus. My contact details is ronjita.phy at the rate acwb.edu.in. Now, we will discuss what is constraint or restriction or what is constraint force. For a rigid body, the distance between any two particles remains constant by the internal forces acting between its individual particles. The magnitude of these internal forces are not known but its effect is known. That is, that makes the particle separation distance constant. These internal forces, which keep the particle separation constant, are known as forces of constraint. The restriction of the movement of the body, the restriction on the movement of the body is called constraint. And the forces which impart this restriction on the motion of the system of particles of the body are called constraint forces. The corresponding equation that describes the motion of the system of particles of the body is known as constraint motion. So the forces of constraint, its magnitude, we can't measure, but its effect we know. That effect is what? That is the particle separation which is constant. For a rigid body, we know the distance between the two particles remains same. This is due to the forces of constraint. Now, let us mention some examples of constraint motion as given below. The motion of a bridge along a horizontally stretched wire. It is restricted to move on a straight path. The motion of the bob of a simple pendulum. It is restricted to oscillate in the vertical plane. So everywhere there is restriction. Motion, <coughs> the motion of a train on the rails. It is confined along the rails only. The motion of gas molecules which are confined in a container. That is here the motion is restricted by the walls of the container. The motion of a rigid body is such that the distance between only two particles of the body remains always constant. So these are the examples of constraint motion. Now to describe the motion of a body in space, we require three coordinates. But to describe the motion on a straight string, we require only one coordinate. Thus, if we impose constraints on a mechanical system, we can reduce the number of coordinates required to describe the motion. The coordinates imposed on the system by the constraints can be written down mathematically as a relation satisfied by the coordinates of the particles of the system at any time. This is the way in which the constraints imposed on a system reduce the number of coordinates needed to specify the configuration of the system. Now let us consider as an example, the motion of a simple pendulum, which is confined to move in a vertical plane. Now we need only two coordinates in Cartesian coordinates. And what, is, what are the coordinates in Cartesian system? That is X and Y. And in polar coordinate with the coordinates are R and theta. Here we need, so for here, for here means here, for simple pendulum. For simple pendulum, we need two polar coordinates, R and theta, to locate the position of the bob at any time with respect to the point of suspension. The constant motion of the pendulum is the distance small l of the bob P from the point of suspension O, that is always remains constant. So in constant motion, the distance L that is the L of the bob from P to O. So here, that, that is the distance L of the bob from P position to O position. This is the motion of a simple pendulum in a vertical plane. In this figure, it is shown. 
So from P to O, the distance is written as small l. And it is constant. <clears throat> and the distance is always constant. The mathematical expression of the constraints when expressed in Cartesian coordinates that is written as x squared plus y squared equal to l squared. Now if it is expressed in plane polar coordinate we can write it as r equal to l. Now it has been observed that the mathematical expression describing the constraint is simpler in the case of plane polar coordinates. Only one coordinate is sufficient to describe the constraint motion. Whereas in Cartesian coordinates, we require two coordinates, x and y. So here, the choice of, the, of a suitable coordinate system is very much important in describing the constraint motion. So it is very important to choose the proper coordinate system to describe the constraint motion. Now the proper choice of coordinates help us to reduce the number of parameters and to make the expression simply simpler. If a particle is restricted to move on the surface of a sphere, then we can write the mathematical expression of restriction in the Cartesian coordinate system as follows. That is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to s squared. Now in spherical polar coordinate system, we will, uh, same expression we will write as r equal to a, where small a is the radius of the sphere. In this example, we can see that the spherical polar coordinate can be used with a greater advantage. Now if we consider a two-body system, that means double pendulum, we require four coordinates, two for each pendulum. If we have chosen Cartesian coordinate system to describe the system completely, we can choose a Cartesian coordinate system. But if we choose polar coordinate system, then only we require two coordinates, theta 1 and theta 2. Where four coordinate system are needed to describe the two-body system, they are only here in, in Cartesian coordinate system, four coordinates are required. But in polar coordinate system, only the coordinate required here as theta 1 and theta 2. So this is the double pendulum. Here the angle is theta 1 and for this, this angle of theta 2. So M1 and M2 masses are suspended here. So to describe the motion here, so that two coordinates are necessary in polar coordinate system that is theta 1 and theta 2. So it is easier to take polar coordinate system for this type of system. Now the classification of constraints. Constraints can be divided depending on whether they are time dependent or time independent, conservative or dissipative, algebraic equations or algebraic inequalities. Now first we are discussing holonomic constraints. If the constraint relation can be made independent of velocity and can be expressed in the form of algebraic equation, then it is called holonomic constraint. Now this is the equation that is if is a function of r1, r2 that is the position coordinates here of the particles, different particles and rn. It is up to and so the position, a function of position coordinate and here t is the time. So equal to zero. So this is a equation. So in holonomic constraint, it can be given, expressed in the form of equation. Now next, non-holonomic constraint. If the constraint cannot be expressed in an equation form, this type, then this is called non-holonomic constraint. So non-holonomic constraint is not a, uh, is not, uh, it, it is not, expressed in the form of equation rather it can be expressed in in the uh, form of it it is expressed in the form of inequality so equation is not here so inequality comes here so these are the uh, this is a non holonomic constraint now next uh, constraint is scleronomic constraint if the constraint relations do not explicitly depend on time then it is called scleronomic constraint next rheonomic constraint if the constraint relations explicitly depend on time, then it is called rheonomic constraint, that is time dependent. Another constraint is conservative constraint. If the total mechanical energy of the system is conserved during the constraint motion, 
through that the work done by the constraint forces are zero then this constraint is known as conservative constraint next dissipative constraint if the total mechanical energy of the system is not conserved during the constraint motion and the forces of constraint do some work then this type of constraint is known as dissipative constraints so the constraints are different type constraints we have discussed so first one is holonomic then second one is non holonomic then scleronomic constraint rheonomic constraint conservative constraint and dissipative constraint now we will discuss some examples of different type of constraints now this is the case of rigid body we are considering first now for a rigid body if ri is the position vector of the ith particle and rj it is the position vector of the j particle from a reference origin o then the distance between the any two particles say i and j is constant now mod of ri minus rj that is the distance between the two particles mod square that is equal to constant and we are writing it at c square so we are writing so this is uh, this is in the one type of equation we are getting so mod of ri minus rj whole square minus c square equal to 0 so this is the constant equation for the rigid body now the constant relation uh, here the work done by the constant forces vanishes and the constant relation is time independent so what type of constant we are getting for rigid body we are getting holonomic as it is it can be expressed in the form of equation no time part here is shown so it is uh, time independent so it is scleronomic and it is also conservative so for rigid body this this is the explanation of the constants now our next example motion of a body on an inclined plane under gravity this is the figure here shown this is the body on the inclined plane and the plane making an angle theta now when a body p is our body when a body p of mass m moves on a smooth inclined surface the motion of the body is restricted on the surface of the inclined plane by the normal reactional force r and r is the force of constraint now if xy be the position coordinate of the body p at any instant of the inclined plane with angle of inclination theta with the horizontal the constant relation can be written as constant relation rather it is constant equation it can be written as y minus x sin tan theta equal to 0 so the slope here tan theta equal to y by x also it can be found that is the work done by the constant forces vanishes so what type of constant we are getting for a motion of a body on an inclined plane under gravity it is holonomic constant as it can be expressed in the form of equation it is scleronomic constant so it is not depending on time and it is also conservative constant so this is the explanation for the motion of a body on an inclined plane under gravity for constants now our next example a pendulum with variable length in this case the length of the string is changing with time the position of the bob at a particular time t that is it can be written as mod of r t whole square that is it is l square that is the length but is this length it is changing with time so this is length square that is is a function of t in case of simple pendulum that l was constant but here this l is varying with time so l is a function of t so where l is the length of the pendulum which is a function of time and rt is the position vector of the bob at any time t so our constant relation it can be written as mod of rt square equal to l square function of t here the work done w by the constant force t is not zero so the constant becomes here holonomic as it can be expressed in the form of equation but it is a rheonomic why 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 because it is depending on time and it is also dissipative not conservative as the work done by the constant forces is not equal to zero so this is the these are the constraints for pendulum with variable length now particle fixed on a surface of a sphere 
so this example already we have discussed but now i will discuss elaborately defining constraints when the particle is restricted by the constraint force so that it can only move on the surface of a sphere of radius a the equation of constraint can be written as r equal to a where r is the position of the particle so the constraint must be holonomic scleronomic and conservative as it can be written in the form of equation so this is holonomic constraint and it is also scleronomic so it is time independent and it is also conservative next the motion of gas molecules in a spherical container now if a small a is the radius of the spherical container and ri is the instantaneous position of the ith gas molecule with respect to the center of container then the constraint relation is mod of ri is less than equal to a so the constraint must be here non holonomic as inequality comes here so the constraint is non holonomic as it is time independent so it is scleronomic and also it is dissipative so inequality is coming so for that it is not holonomic it is non holonomic it is uh, it is uh, not holonomic and it is called non holonomic constraint now next the particle in a cubical box the particle is restricted by the constraints in such a way that it can move on the edge of the cubical box or inside the box so again here we are getting the equation of the constraint as inequalities so the particle in a box the figure it is shown this is the particle's position at an instant we are considering it so particle can be anywhere within the box so it is position is not definite so x that is greater than equal to 0 and less than equal to a so x greater from 0 to a greater than equal to 0 and less than equal to a y is greater than equal to 0 and less than equal to a and z is greater than equal to 0 and less than equal to a so these are representing non equalities so from here we can say the constraint is obviously non holonomic constraint and this is conservative constraint so it is non holonomic we have to remember as inequality is coming now simple pendulum we always uh, we, have, we have discussed this earlier but here we will define the constraint with figure and elaborately simple pendulum now this is the figure of the simple pendulum that is here the, that is the instantaneous position we are considering that is b it and a is the equilibrium position and here mg is acting in this way and if this angle is theta then this angle is also theta so it is mg cos theta this component and in this direction it is mg sin theta and l that is fixed here and mass m is the mass of the pop now let us consider a simple pendulum of mass m and effective length l the weight mg of the bob at position b that is the position b acts vertically downward and the tension t of the spring maintains the effective length l of the pendulum constant now t makes the effective length constant now if small xy is the position coordinate of the center of the bob at any instant with respect to the origin o so here this is the position xy instantaneous position from the origin o at the point of suspension then we can write the constant as x square plus y square equal to l square now here that is uh, x square l cos theta l square cos square theta plus l square sin square theta we are getting it equal to now it is cos square theta and sin square theta equal to 1 so x square plus y square equal to l square now therefore the constraint here is holonomic scleronomic and conservative as the work done by the constraint force is zero so as it is expressed in the form of equation so it is holonomic constraint it is also scleronomic because it is not depending on time and it is conservative as the work done by the constraint force is zero now next any deformable body 
for a deformable body the shape of the body can change according to a certain prescribed function of time so for any two particles ith particle and jth particle the position vector ri and rj respectively that is it is we are if we take the ri and rj that is the position vector of ith particle and jth particle then the constant relation we can write it as mod of ri minus rj equal to function of t so that is deformable body so the distance between the two particles it is not fixed it is depending on time with time the distance between the two particles that is changing so it is function of time so we can write this in the this form of equation hence the constant forces do work as the shape is changing with time and the constant relation is a function of time so for deformable body it is a holonomic constant as it can be written in terms of equation so it is called holonomic constant but it is rheonomic not scleronomic rheonomic why because it is time dependent the distance between the two particles it is depending on time function of time so it is rheonomic constant and also it is dissipative constant now this is for the deformable body now up to this we have discussed that is the different constant relation of different systems now we have to know the relation between the degrees of freedom and the constraint now first we have to know what is degrees of freedom if the total that is the uh, number of independent ways by which a dynamical system can move without violating any constraint imposed on it that is called the degrees of freedom of the system so the degrees of freedom can be defined as the minimum number of independent coordinates which can specify the position of the system completely a system of n free particles has 3n number of degrees of freedom as three cartesian coordinates are required to specify the position of each particle so for cartesian coordinate system 3n number of degrees of freedom it is needed needed to specify the n free to uh, specify the system of n free particles 3n number of degrees of freedom exist but if the distribution of the particles of the system be fixed to maintain the constant motion of the system then the number of degrees of freedom will be less than 3n due to constraints all the 3n number of coordinates are not all free or independent to each other so if a system of for a system of n free particles and it has small f number of constraints or the number of constraint equation that is small m then the number of independent coordinates will be 3n minus m so degrees of freedom is reducing is if the number of constraints are increased so if it is for a, a, a n a n free particles the degrees of freedom was 3n but here if there are n m number of constraint equations then the degrees of freedom will reduce from 3n and will be reduced and will it will reach to 3n minus m so hence here we can write that 3n minus m will be the degrees degrees of freedom for a constant motion instead of 3n degrees of freedom so constraints when applied uh, on a system then it reduces the number of degrees of freedom and total degrees of freedom will be the initial degrees of freedom and when constraint is applied the number of constraint uh, relation equations will be subtracted from the initial degrees of freedom so this is the relation between the degrees of freedom and constraint so if constraints in is increased then the degrees of freedom decreases so now up to today up to this now but i want to summarize my whole lecture before completing my class today's class now here what we have discussed i'm coming from the first slide so we have discussed today that is what is constraint constraint that is one type of rare this is restriction imposed on the system and this is the we can't measure the constraint force 
directly but its uh, magnitude we can't measure but the effect is known and for rigid body the distance between the two particles that is fixed and this is due to the forces of constraint that is the internal forces acting inside the body now we have discussed different examples of the constraint motion then we have defined different class of constraints classification of constraints that is holonomic non holonomic scleronomic rheonomic conservative and dissipative constraints then we have different uh, systems we have discussed and the constraints the constraints for the rigid body the explanation of the constraint for the uh, for a body on an inclined plane under gravity then the case in the next case pendulum with variable length then particle on the surface of a sphere the motion of gas molecules in a spherical container then particle in a cubical box then simple pendulum then any deformable deformable body and here at last the for deformable body we are getting here that is holonomic and rheonomic constant because that is the distance it is it is function of it is a function of time distance between the two particles that is a function of time at last what we have discussed that is the relation between the degrees of freedom and constraint and we have shown here that if the number of constraints increases the number of degrees of freedom decreases so initially if uh, for n number of free particles 3n number of degrees of freedom is there uh, if we consider in cartesian coordinate system then if that we apply n number of constraint equations then the degrees of freedom reduces to 3n minus m so this is up to today's lecture and the uh, students can follow for this uh, constraint part constraint relations or constant forces of constraints the book classical mechanics textbook by goldstein introduction to classical me mechanics with problems and solution by david j morin classical mechanics by rana and jo classical mechanics by j c upadhyay so these books are very much important students can follow this books for the constraint part constraint uh, equations or constraint force now thank you very much uh, for listening my lecture if the student have any doubt uh, then uh, they can contact me in my official email id so thank you very much to all